as we remember the Chardon community this week, we often reflect on how that tragic event changes all. Three News Investigates, Marissa Sines, examines the essential question that's been at the forefront since that deadly shooting 10 years ago. Have we made our children safer? Some days it feels like it's been 100 years. Other days it, it seems like yesterday. It's a... Uh, it, it depends on the on the moment that hits you. I can, of course, you know, the, the date is coming up, so it's certainly, I know it's weighing heavy on a lot of folks. That date, February 27, 2012, 90 seconds that shook Chardon's tranquility. It was a typical day. It was a, kind of a snowy February day, like most days in Chardon in February. The bell had rang as normal, um, and at 7.37, uh, we, we heard gunshots and went into lockdown and went from there. The morning seared into the mind of Andy Fetchick, Chardon High School's principal, when six of his students were shot. Three died. But even in middle America, February 27th was a day Chardon High School prepared for during active shooter drills just two years earlier. Superintendent at the time, Joe Brigant, um, and I really went round and round about whether we should do this, but we knew it was the right thing to do. Um, and that, at the end of the day, was why we did it. He said unequivocally, without that drill, more people would have died. And I'm very proud that, that we did stick with that. The community embraced itself, vowing to stay strong and to learn and grow from the tragedy. Across the U.S., 34 people in all were killed in our schools in 2012, and more mass shootings would follow. Sandy Hook just 10 months later, Parkland, Florida in 2018, each tragedy ushering in demands for change, demands seemingly lost in politics and passing time. The farther you are away from a high profile incident like Chardon, the greater the apathy and denial that sets in, which can make schools actually less safe than in the time immediately after a high profile incident. Data on school shootings varies greatly depending on the source, but the Department of Homeland Security says 189 people have been killed since Chardon, striking numbers that raise a vital question are schools safer? Yes, I believe they are. Florida professor Scott Pollan has studied school shootings for decades, responding to 16 scenes. I do believe most school shootings should have been prevented because almost every school shooter talked about what they were going to do. Poland and others say schools have responded by tightening security and adding counselors trained to recognize warning signs. But those signs are now exacerbated by a two-year-long pandemic that's increased mental health concerns among our children. To security expert Ken Trump, that's why the life-altering morning in Chardon needs to be remembered every day. The question really isn't whether Chardon or any other incident's a wake-up call. The question is, will we hit the snooze button and go back to sleep? Six months or six years down the road without another school shooting, are people as vigilant as they were in the days after a high-profile incident? And the answer tends to be no. In recent years, Fetchik left Chardon High, but his younger children are now students there, learning inside a building embraced by a community, forever woven in history to February 27th, 2012. I think that's kind of a cathartic thing for me as well to to remember that because unfortunately when that date rolls around you do think of loss and, and, and death and it's that shouldn't be what we think of. In this post-pandemic time experts recommend school districts revisit their school security plans to ensure it aligns with today's ongoing mental health crisis. Now in Chardon they worked with law enforcement and upgraded door security, camera systems and two-way radios and just as importantly they employ two full-time counselors. Marissa Signs, 3 News.